So this is just a quick overview of how the cart works. There's the snowblower engine, which sat in my grandpa's garage for like 10, 20 years. Um, and all I had to do was work on the car because we, the valve got messed up. But other than that, we just had to change the oil and it works fine. Um, and so we added a kill switch up. Uh, below the steering wheel where a key slot would be pretty close to so that's just a toggle kind of thing on or off and that just shorts out the spark plug so then nothing ignites the gas and then there's no the engine doesn't run anymore and then you can flip it on and then you can start it and then there's a pull starter or an electric starter the electric starter you have to plug it into a wall socket though so I usually use the pull start uh, and the electric start was already on the snowblower in the first place and then we have the choke and the exhaust we used gas piping which you can just it's cast iron you can just get it from Home Depot or whatever a normal hardware store and then the drive to the snowblower is belt and it goes to a jack shaft which is this thing right there and that just has a brake disc on it from a snowmobile and that has that's an 8 inch brake disc it's not hydraulic it's just a cable powered but we can get plenty of leverage which I'll explain in a minute and then we also have the clutch lever, which pivots on this axle. And then when you pull the clutch handle forward, it latches. Kind of needs a little work. Um, and then that puts tension on the cable, which lifts up these two oak arms which puts tension on the belt through an idler pulley that just spins. There's plenty of tension there. And then that, goes, that gives power to the jack shaft, so the jack shaft starts spinning. And then from the jack shaft we have a single belt, which will then go down to our wheel, but the wheel right now is gone because it broke, so I'm going to mount that soon. My neighbor reinforced it, and then for the brake, how we get enough leverage is there's a little sheathed cable, which goes back to a lever, which works as a, which works as a, just an emergency brake. It moves like half an inch, but it gives you enough leverage, or you can push on the pedal, which pulls on this cable, which goes up through this electrical conduit but it's mechanical cable which goes down to the pedal so you push on that it pulls on the lever which then activates the brake disc and slows it down and then I also made a quick feature of a parking brake when you engage this just far enough sorry it's a little hard there we engage it just far enough then it locks the brake disc in place, or you can unlatch it and slide the block forward, and then there's no parking brake because it doesn't slide that block forward. And yeah, and then I have a it's a one wheel drive, so because we, we don't have a differential or anything, we rigged a muffler onto the exhaust, and we have motorcycle springs right here. And here and the entire engine platform pivots on two bolts right there and right there so then the in entire engine platform pivots up and down but it's held by the springs and then those bolts just keep the platform moving up and down not side to side and then the front we have
little hard to see there. We have springs from engine valves. You just buy them at like any car parts store, whatever. And they're just, they are in the engine to keep the valves depressed, but in this case we're using them as suspension because they're quite stiff. And we use three so that the axle, the wood axle can move straight up and down or tilt side to side. And then, um, and then the wheels are dolly wheels that we got at Harbor Freight. I would definitely not recommend those, especially for any driven wheels because they broke. So this is the wheel that I got repaired. It's black spray paint, but it looked just like those other ones you saw outside. And my neighbor reinforced it by adding a 3 16th steel plate between the two rims. So just under this, and then welded the bearing sleeve assembly thing to the steel and then also to the wheel. You can't quite see it because I had the pulley in the way. But yeah, and then the axle goes through there, and then the pulley is independent of the support axle. So the axle never turns. The jack shaft does and one wheel does. So yeah.